In this episode of Cloud Performance Atlas, I help some foodies bring home the bacon by profiling their startup time. Can their architecture stand the heat? Stay tuned to find out. I gave a talk in New York last week where I met the people behind Foodie Picks, a social network that only allows you to share pictures of food. Uh, no text, no audio, no emoji, just a picture of food and the geolocal tag where it was taken at. Turns out their team had read my previous articles on App Engine startup performance and wanted to reach out and see if I could help them with a similar issue. While uh, talking to their team over a round of free pizza, I got a clear sense of their architecture. As a user uploaded a picture of food, it was sent to a compute engine instance, where it ran some logic and processing on the picture to make sure it's really an image of food. Now, uh, I didn't really figure anything was wrong until they showed me a graph which looked something like this. They were seeing about 300 second cold boot time for their applications, while the response latency for a request was in the 300 millisecond range. Uh, now, to be fair, by this point, I hadn't really dug in to compute engine cold boot performance that much, so I was happy to use this as an excuse to investigate further. Now, you may see a common trend in my performance debugging pattern at this point. When trying to track down performance issues like this, I first like to remove my code and establish a baseline to know how badly my code is impacting things. As such, the first steps in figuring out the problem was to run a quick test to see if, number one, given a static configuration, how long Compute Engine instance takes to boot up, and number two, get given changes in that configuration, how does that impact the previous number? So let's start with a simple test, just 15 iterations of starting an instance and timing how long until we can SSH into it. On average, a two CPU, eight gig VM took about 60 seconds to boot up, which I think does a nice job of establishing our baseline. Now, I would assume that improving resources should see an improvement in cold boot time since there's more cycles available to help the image get up and running. So I doubled the core and memory count and saw an average of about 63 seconds, a little worse, but still within margin of error. This made me wonder if increasing the CPU and RAM caused boot time to degrade linearly. To test that, I increased both by 8x and saw that the average time was about 62 seconds, which doesn't exactly conform to my thought that VM startup time would be linear with resource requested. More so that these timing fluctuations were had something to do with the small size of my sample set. That being said, GCE did recently update the max number of CPUs you can request in a VM to 64, and when testing, we did see that these had consistently higher cold boot time than their less than 32 core counterparts. So just to make sure we wrap this all together, let's do 200 configurations of random CPU and RAM sizes and see what we get. After testing this about 20 times, the average still looked to be about 62 seconds. And to be clear, those uh, valleys and spikes don't correlate with a specific configuration. They move around pretty regularly between iterations of the test. This whole thing let me know two important facts. Number one, cold boot time of compute engine VMs are not correlated with CPU RAM configurations directly. And number two, the 300 second cold boot time that the foodie pick VMs were seeing is being caused by something else. So let's get some more information about boot up. Now, obviously we need to install the operating system on the VM. Maybe we were using some weird configuration of image that I wasn't testing with. So let's put them head to head. Keep the configuration the same, but test a Linux instance versus a Windows instance and see if that could be the problem. Not surprisingly, there was some variation in the results. Most of the Linux-based builds acted pretty similar, but the Windows builds were drastically slower. And just to get visibility, I also tested booting clusters of machines, so seeing how one VM booted versus 20 at the same time showed some big differences with the Windows VMs. But FoodiePix wasn't using Windows VMs, they were using Linux VMs and only launching about one or two at a time. So the choice of an image isn't having anything to do with their slow cold boot performance. Now, one nice side effect of profiling things is that when you typically end up learning more about some part of the system that you didn't have visibility to before, or rather you end up adding transparency to a previous black box system. For me, running these tests showed off a few parts of the system I didn't know about, namely that Compute Engine has a distinct latency in various stages of VM boot up process. As a request comes in to create a new instance, GCE will move through the stages with variance latency attached to to it. Uh, just to kick the tire, I enlisted the help of fellow cloud DA Terry Ryan, and I was able to get a profile on each of these stages, which 
actually didn't reveal any specific problems. Other than the specific startup process, you can expect about seven seconds dedicated to responding to a request and about 18 seconds dedicated to provisioning the VM before any of your code starts running. Now, uh, at this point, it's unclear what's causing Foodie Pick start time to be so slow, but we have eliminated CPU RAM configurations and image selection as culprits. Sadly though, I only have so much time in each one of these videos. So if you wanna see what solved the problem, check out the rest of the Cloud Performance Atlas content. And remember, when it comes to performance, every millisecond counts.